What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you an overview of CRPG combat. So if you're unaware, on this channel, I cover just a ton of CRPGs. I've played and 100 percented a ton of them, and they're a big part of what this channel covers. Now, as such, I've actually gotten requests to do a video like this and just kind of talk about some of the generalities of what CRPG combat has to offer. Now that said, these are again the common themes that you're going to see across most CRPGs. And while some CRPGs have certain unique properties, such as Tyranny's spellcrafting system for instance, what I'm focused on with this video are the very common forms and types of CRPG combat that make them instantly recognizable to me as somebody who has played a ton of them. And recognizing these things is one of the ways in which I can get almost immediately acquainted with a combat system within these games. And hopefully some people will find some value in that and it'll help them out. Now, right off the bat, just to tell you about a bit of my own biases here, I personally prefer a turn-based system that is rather complicated. So while I will talk about a lot of the forms of combat here, just know that personally I prefer a turn-based system. But that said, CRPG combat in general is usually based on either a tabletop role-playing system or a unique role-playing system developed specifically for that game. Now, tabletop role-playing systems are typically used in titles that share the same name as the tabletop games, such as Pathfinder or Baldur's Gate or any of the D&D games, etc. Whereas unique role-playing systems are typically used for games like Divinity Original Sin 2, the recently released Encased title of last year, etc. But at the most basic level, all of these systems basically see you using your character's stats or attributes combined with their allocation of gear to give them their combat effectiveness. But combat itself in these games can typically be divided into two forms, turn-based or real-time with pause. Now some games are actually starting to release with both of these systems of combat. So titles like Pillars of Eternity 2 or both of the Pathfinder games, you can't actually see both forms in one game. So that is becoming more prevalent, though typically speaking, you will see one or the other. Turn-based is exactly that. It's where everyone takes their turn one at a time, or in some games cases, teams at a time. So for instance, titles like Wasteland 3, your team, that is to say the friendly team or the enemy team, will all take their turns all at once, as opposed to individual characters taking their turns individually. And then of course, with real time with pause, combat is happening in real time with the ability to pause the action and give your characters instructions. Now an important distinction to make with real time with pause is that typically speaking, it is actually still a little bit turn-based in the sense that the timings and cooldowns, etc. on your abilities are still happening. For instance, in games where the system that it's based on gives you a six second turn, that is still happening in real time with pause, meaning that you can only take an action every six seconds, etc. So that's an important thing to understand about real time with pause. But that said, let's talk about turn-based a bit more in depth first. So when it comes to turn-based, I think one of the most important things you need to figure out with the game you're playing right off the bat is how are the turns being decided? Is it, as I mentioned, a team-based turn system, which is my personal preference. It is much faster, in my opinion, than the individual option. However, a game like Divinity Original Sin 2 actually uses a form of round robin. This meaning that one of your characters will go, then one of the enemy characters will go, and that continues on until combat resolves. And while it's a little more nuanced than that, that's the gist. But with turn-based in particular, it's obviously very important to know how to swing the advantage of who's taking their turn win in your favor. Because in the example of Original Sin 2, a round of combat does not end until everyone has taken their turn. Which means if you have the enemy vastly outnumbered, once their two or three enemies, let's say, have taken their turn, all of your characters are still going to get to go one after the other. And if you summon something, etc., that summon is also going to take its turn before that round of combat ends. So in that way, Original Sin 2 is fairly easily cheesed because of how they dedicate their turn system to all of the characters on the field. Now, from there, I think turn-based can itself largely be divided into two different forms, and that is an action point system or an action and a move system. Now, with an action point system, it's pretty straightforward. Everything you do, movement, action, spellcasting, etc., just costs action points. And, you know, you keep doing what you're doing until you're out of action points. And then we have the action and a move system. This is similar, but different enough to warrant an explanation. So with this system, each character will typically have a set amount of movement based on their stats or attributes. 
And then in that same turn, they can also take an action in addition to moving. In some cases, you might be able to sacrifice your action in exchange for being able to move double the amount. But the general gist is that you can move and take an action per turn in that form. So with turn-based in particular, it is, in my opinion, very helpful to have an understanding of the action economy which in the absolute simplest terms possible is simply how many actions everyone is getting per turn, you or the enemy. And obviously, you want to have more actions than the enemy does. Now, I've actually made a whole other video about the action economy, which I'll try to link below rather than explain it all here. But in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to turn turn-based in your favor is to just look for ways to give you more turns than the enemy has. And while it is a little more nuanced than that, that in and of itself I have found to be incredibly helpful advice. But again, I talk more about that in a separate video. Now, one thing that you primarily see in turn-based CRPGs is a cover-based system where putting your characters into cover makes them harder to hit. You see this in a few different games, probably Wasteland 3 is my favorite example. And when either you or an enemy is in cover, you'll have to flank that target to get rid of their cover bonus, which affects your chance to hit that target. And while honestly it's a pretty simple concept, I just wanted to mention here that that is primarily seen in turn-based games. But from there, a little bit of pros and cons for the turn-based system as a whole. So the pro, in my opinion, for turn-based combat is simply that it is very easy to follow. It's much easier to see what is going on. And it's much easier to micromanage because you're only dealing with a certain amount of actions and things at a time compared to real-time with pause where everything's happening all at once. Now, the downside of turn-based combat, in my opinion, the biggest flaw of it is simply that it is incredibly slow. And while some systems have found ways to kind of speed this up, either by literally letting you speed up the animations, etc. in some games, or in the case of the team-based games, just letting your team go all at once actually does speed up the action a bit. At the end of the day, turn-based is just slower than real-time with pause, and for some people, that's a bit of a deal-breaker. Now, let's talk a bit about real-time with pause now. As I mentioned, real-time with pause is often, in some cases, still technically turn-based. It's just happening all at once. However, at any time, you can press space or whatever button you're using to pause and give your characters directions. But probably the most important thing to understand about this combat is that you can't just take actions immediately upon telling your character to do it. Typically, there are things like casting times, wind-up times, but often there's also a recovery time system. That is to say, after you take an action, your character has to take a few seconds to recover before they can do something else. And as I mentioned earlier, with tabletop systems, there tends to be a six-second action or a six-second turn rule, and that still applies to what you're able to do within six seconds. So just because you give a character an instruction doesn't necessarily mean they'll do it right away. And this is why real time with pause, I think, takes a bit more of an understanding of what's going on, because in order to get the most out of this system, you need to not actively be telling your character to wait to do something that they can't do until what is technically their next turn. Now, something that you do see occasionally in real-time with pause systems that I'm a pretty big fan of is a sort of AI setup system that will allow you to tell your characters that if this certain condition is met, then you should go ahead and take this particular action. You see this in games like Dragon Age Origins or Pillars of Eternity 2, etc. But these systems will basically allow you to customize an individual character's approach to combat even when you are not directly controlling them, which I find to be very helpful, especially with a real-time with pause system. And truthfully, this is a system that you'll actually see outside of just the CRPG genre as well. But in general, this is something you see with real-time with pause especially, because obviously in turn-based you don't really need this. But the obvious pros of real-time with pause are simply that it's much faster and more action-oriented than turn-based really could ever be. But because of that, at the same time, in order to be really good at it, you need to have a much better understanding of what is happening and what you're seeing, which in general, at least for newcomers to the genre, is definitely a very difficult thing to get used to because there's just a lot of stuff happening all at once and it can be hard to make sense of it if you don't have a really already solid grasp of what you're looking at which are pretty much the cons, that it's very chaotic and that it just requires more knowledge of what you're doing in order to be effective. Now, before we wrap this video up, I want to talk about something that I think it's important to note about both of these systems, and that is, is the system proactive or is it reactive? Now, more and more these days, a lot of games are leaning towards the reactive side of things because some people would see it as more fair, frankly. And this is that when you start a 
combat encounter, etc. Are you able to react to what is happening versus already being out of luck because you didn't prepare beforehand? So in my opinion, a reactive system is going to allow you to do things like buff in the middle of combat and basically being buffed to the nines, just not being necessary at all times, etc. But then you take a more proactive system, like say Pathfinder, where going into encounters, especially on higher difficulties, you really need to be buffed and ready to go before you ever set foot in combat, because you're just not going to be given the opportunity to do it during combat. And while I think it's fairly common sense that going into a battle already buffed up is going to help you out, my point with this part of the video is simply that in some games, that is more mandatory than a nice to have. So it's always important to look out for things like that and basically kind of just understand how you're expected to approach the combat encounter. And as simple as that sounds, I found that to be a very helpful bit of advice, even if it is a bit simple. But there you go, guys, just kind of a general overview of CRPG combat and just kind of the very common themes that I see across tons of games that hopefully people will find some value in and find helpful, etc. And if you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you guys so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.